Hello children, I hope you are all happy and safe. Welcome to this special English hour. Here every day we will learn something new in a fun and interesting way. Are you ready to have fun? Then come. I would now like to ask you a few questions. Let us share our thoughts and ideas. Children, have you ever had the chance to be to a magic show? I have been to a magic show when I was a little child. Children, what happens at the magic show? At a magic show, there is a person called a magician. The magician performs magic tricks to entertain the people. Children, do you know of someone else who can perform magic tricks? Have you heard about wizards? Wizards are fictional characters or imaginary characters who are said to have magical powers. Children, we will be reading a very interesting lesson today. The Journey to the Great Oz If you have a textbook, please open to page number 52 and point to the words as I read. If you don't have a textbook, please see your TV screens and listen to me carefully. Children, come, let's read this very interesting lesson. The journey to the Great Oz. The Wizard of Oz is a well-known fantasy of children's literature. It tells the story of Dorothy who is whisked with her dog Toto by the cyclone to the wonderful land of Oz. There she meets the tin woodman who needs a heart, the scarecrow who needs brains and the cowardly lion who needs bravery. They all want to see the Wizard of Oz, the only person who can help them. Here's an account of a part of their journey to the Emerald City of Oz, where the Wizard lives. Read the Wizard of Oz to find out what happens next? The Wizard of Oz was written by Lehman Frank Baum, 1856 to 1919. He has written many other books about Oz. This classic novel was also made into a movie. Children, come, let's read now. The 
this was to be an eventful day for the travellers. They had hardly been walking an hour when they saw before them a great ditch that crossed the road and divided the forest as far as they could see on either side. It was a very wide ditch and when they crept up to the edge and looked into it, they could see it was also very deep and there were many big jagged rocks at the bottom. The sides were so steep that none of them could climb down and for a moment it seemed that their journey must end. So children, the travellers are the cowardly lion, the tin woodman, Dorothy, her dog Toto and the scarecrow. They all are on their journey to the Emerald City of Oz. And where do they reach? They reach a great ditch which is wide and very deep. It is not possible for anyone to climb down that ditch. There are big and jagged rocks at the bottom. Anyone who slips while climbing down would almost die. The travellers thought that their journey had almost come to an end. Children, let's read further. What shall we do? asked Dorothy despairingly. I haven't the faintest idea, said the tin woodman. And the lion shook his shaggy mane and looked thoughtful. But the scarecrow said, We cannot fly, that is certain. Neither can we climb down into this great ditch. Therefore, if we cannot jump over it, we must stop where we are. I think I could jump over it, said the cowardly lion. After measuring the distance carefully in his mind. Then we are all right, answered the scarecrow, for you can carry us all over on your back, one at a time. Well, I'll try it, said the lion. Who will go first? I will declared the scarecrow. For if you found that you could not jump over the gulf, Dorothy would be killed. Or the tin woodman badly dented on the rocks below. But if I am on your back, it will not matter so much. For the fall would not hurt me at all. I am terribly afraid of falling myself, said the cowardly lion. But I suppose there is nothing to do but try it. So get on my back and we will make the attempt. The scarecrow sat upon the lion's back and the big beast walked to the edge of the gulf 
and crouched down. Why don't you run and jump? asked the scarecrow. Because that isn't the way we lions do these things, he replied. Then, giving a great spring, he shot through the air and landed safely on the other side. They were all greatly pleased to see how easily he did it. And after the scarecrow had got down from his back, the lion sprang across the ditch again. Dorothy thought she would go next. So she took Toto in her arms and climbed on the lion's back, holding tightly to his mane with one hand. The next moment, it seemed as if she were flying through the air. And then, before she had time, to think about it, she was safe on the other side. The lion went back a third time and got the tin woodman. And then they all sat down for a few moments to give the beast a chance to rest. For his great leaps had made his breath short. And he panted like a big dog that has been running too long. So children, what did Dorothy, the Tin Woodman, the Cowardly Lion and the Scarecrow do? When they saw the big ditch, they all were afraid. They thought they would have to stop their journey. But the cowardly lion stepped ahead. He measured the ditch and he told all of them that I can jump over the ditch and I can take you one by one. The scarecrow who wanted brains was very smartly sharing his piece of advice. He shares that if the lion can take me, let me go first because it would be a big risk for Dorothy if the lion is not able to cross the ditch. Even the tin woodman would get dented if he fell on the rocks, but nothing would happen to me. So the scarecrow sat on the cowardly lion's back while the cowardly lion took a big leap across the ditch. One by one, the lion brought them all safely to the other side. Now do you think the lion is cowardly? They found the forest very thick on this side and it looked dark and gloomy. After the lion had rested, they started along the road of yellow brick, silently wondering, each in his own mind, if ever they would come to the end of the woods and reach the bright sunshine again. To add to their discomfort, they soon heard strange noises in the depths of the forest and the lion whispered to them that it was in this part of the country that the Kalidas lived. What are the Kalidas? asked the girl. They are monstrous beasts with bodies like bears and heads like tigers, replied the lion. And with claws so long and sharp that they could tear me in two as easily as I could 
kill Toto. I am terribly afraid of the Kalidas. I am not surprised that you are, returned Dorothy. They must be dreadful beasts. The lion was about to reply when suddenly they came to another gulf across the road. But this one was so broad and deep that the lion knew at once he could not leap across it. So they sat down to consider what they should do. And after serious thought, the scarecrow said, Here is a great tree standing close to the ditch. If the tin woodman can chop it down so that it will fall to the other side, we can walk across it easily. That is a first-rate idea, said the lion. One would almost suspect you had brains in your head instead of straw. The woodman set to work at once and so sharp was his axe that the tree was soon chopped nearly through. Then the lion put his strong front legs against the tree and pushed with all his might. And slowly the big tree tipped and fell with a crash across the ditch with its top branches on the other side. They had just started to cross this queer bridge when a sharp growl made them all look up and to their horror they saw running toward them two great beasts with bodies like bears and heads like tigers. They are the Kalidas, said the cowardly lion, beginning to tremble. Quick, cried the scarecrow, let us cross over. So Dorothy went first, holding Toto in her arms. The tin woodman followed and the scarecrow came next. The lion, although he was certainly afraid, turned to face the Kalidas and then he gave so loud and terrible a roar that Dorothy screamed and the scarecrow fell over backward while even the fierce beast stopped short and looked at him in surprise. But seeing they were bigger than the lion and remembering that there were two of them and only one of him, the Kalidas again rushed forward and the lion crossed over the tree and turned to see what they would do next. Without stopping an instant, the fierce beast also began to cross the tree. And the lion said to Dorothy, We are lost, for they will surely tear us to pieces with their sharp claws. But stand close behind me, and I will fight them as long as I am alive. Children, when Dorothy and her friends get to the other side of the ditch, they learn that the forest is getting thicker. It gets deep and dark. They start to worry if they would ever see the sun again. They start hearing sounds and feel scared. 
the lion tells them that the forest has kalidas. Kalidas are big beasts with the body of a bear, big sharp claws and the face of a tiger. They come to another ditch. The ditch is very wide for the lion to leap across. So once again, the scarecrow suggests that they should cut a tree and use it as a bridge to get to the other side of the ditch. The tin man immediately gets to work with his axe. But when Dorothy and her friends are about to cross the ditch, two Kalidas charge towards them. The lion fights them bravely. Children, what happens next? The Kalidas are right behind Dorothy and her friends. Wait a minute, called the scarecrow. He had been thinking what was best to be done. And now he asked the woodman to chop away the end of the tree that rested on their side of the ditch. The tin woodman began to use his axe at once. And just as the two Kalidas were nearly across, the tree fell with a crash into the gulf, carrying the ugly snarling brutes with it. And both were dashed to pieces on the sharp rocks at the bottom. Well, said the cowardly lion, drawing a long breath of relief. I see we are going to live a little while longer. And I am glad of it, for it must be a very uncomfortable thing not to be alive. Those creatures frightened me so badly that my heart is beating yet. Ah, said the tin woodman, sadly, I wish I had a heart to beat. This adventure made the travellers more anxious than ever to get out of the forest. And they walked so fast that Dorothy became tired and had to ride on the lion's back. To their great joy, the trees became thinner. The farther they advanced, and in the afternoon, they suddenly came upon a broad river, flowing swiftly just before them. On the other side of the water, they could see the road of yellow brick running through a beautiful country with green meadows dotted with bright flowers and all the road bordered with trees hanging full of delicious fruits. They were greatly pleased to see this delightful country before them. From the Wizard of Oz by L. Frank Baum. So children, the journey to the great Oz. What is this story about? The story is about Dorothy and her dog Toto. It's about her friends. The cowardly lion would like to be brave. The tin woodman would like to have a heart and the scarecrow would like to have brains and they all believe that it's only the wizard of Oz who can grant their wishes. So they all make their journey towards the great Oz. During their journey, they come across great trouble but they all bravely fight it with unity. Children, I hope you all enjoyed today's session. Till we meet next time, please take care. 
बाय बाय एंड स्टे सेफ Yeah. <laughs>